close your eyes and gather the mind at the breath. And Jai Mahabhava says that concentration is like a fence for the mind. Virtue is like a fence for the body, speech, and mind. Concentration is specifically a fence for the mind. You're showing some restraint. Your mind is capable of thinking all kinds of things. But you tell yourself, for the time being, you're going to think about just one thing. Anything else that leaves that one thing, you're, just, you're not going to follow it. When you don't follow it, it doesn't go very far. So you're exercising restraint. And you're realizing that not every thought that comes into your mind is worth acting on, or even worth thinking. You begin to sort things out. And then you apply the same principle in, in your life. And John Sawat, who very rarely was critical of people, would have a criticism sometimes that would go right to the heart, which is that this is the sort of person who, as soon as something comes into his head, has to come out of his mouth. There's no filter. And the same applies to your actions. You may be thinking certain thoughts that are not really skillful. You don't want them to show in your actions. When anger comes up in the mind, you have to act as if it's not there. Don't let it come out the door of your body. Don't let it come out the door of your speech. Try to keep it penned in, and even don't pay much attention to it in the mind. You realize, because this kind of thought doesn't really go anywhere. It's not really all that skillful. You have to think about the consequences of what you're doing and saying and thinking. Remember that series of instructions the Buddha gave to Rahula, the very first thing. If there's something you want to do with the body, first thing you ask yourself, what are the consequences going to be? All too often we don't think about them. We feel like doing something, feel like saying something, or it just comes right out. And then we complain about the consequences. Ideally, you should think beforehand, not have to think afterwards. Remember, those instructions were given to a seven-year-old. If you go around saying things and doing things without thinking about the consequences, what's the middle age that you're showing? So restraint is something that makes you mature. You realize you have a power inside you. Your intentions do have an impact. And so you want to make sure that you have a good impact. Because if it's good for others, it's going to come back and be good for you. So keep a filter on your mouth, keep a filter on your gestures and your expressions and your actions in general. And that will make it easier for when you come to sit and meditate. That fence that you build around body, speech, and mind gets a little bit tighter when you concentrate. Even fewer things are allowed to come into the mind or to develop in the mind. But you've got that principle that you realize the fence is there for your own good. You don't feel constrained by it. You realize that it's protecting you. And when you're protected like this, it leaves a wide field open inside. Because if you're not hemmed in by the wise protection of restraint, then you're going to be hemmed in by the consequences of unskillful actions. And those are a lot more confining. So remember, this fence is your friend. Respect it.